Hello and welcome to this live slash podcast episode. So I decided why don't I do both things at once and speak about something really, really, really precious that I'm sure everyone who's here needs to know. That's why you are here. So welcome you all. And I want to say, I want to make an invitation here to treat this live as a masterclass. It's not going to be long, but I want to give you something that will very likely change the way you see relationships, the way you see love, uh, and uh, the way you experience yourself in connection. So... My invitation is for you to just leave aside anything you've been busy with before and make yourself fully present here. Take notes if you need and let's go into that. So please do say hi when you come on. Please tell me why are you here? <laughs> so uh, the concept of dharmic love is something that I love to talk about and something that um, it's a very different approach to love than what is commonly practiced in the world. So let's start from the start. Like what is Dharma? Even why do I call this Dharmic love? And Dharma is a Sanskrit word. So it's a very, very ancient word that may be interpreted in many, many different ways. But at the core of it, and sometimes it's also used in different contexts and so on, but the core of what it is and how I understand it, it's that unique thread of you that weaves through your whole life and that fits into the tapestry of all lives on this planet. And when we live very close to our dharma, the energy that we experience in our bodies, in our lives, it's like we feel in the right place. We feel like we are surrendered into the truest, highest path that is there destined for us. That is how being in alignment with Dharma feels. So it's like a sense of surrender into the river that effortlessly carry you and you really feel like you are in the right place, you are at peace with yourself, you are at ease in your heart, although there will be challenges, like that's obvious, yeah, it's like if we choose to live consciously, if we choose to live awake, like there will be challenges, there will be growing pains, it's normal, yeah, don't imagine that one day there will be no more challenges, no more difficult emotions, like no, it won't come like this, but our attitude towards those changes as we practice, as we grow, as we develop. So dharmic love in this context, it's love that really supports this flow, that supports us to lean into that river of our supreme destiny. And in relationships, we can create that kind of love. So it's the opposite of karma because karma is something that is pre like it can also feel like it's predestined, but it's like when we find ourselves repeating the same situation over and over again, when we find ourselves in patterns, when we find ourselves in very similar dynamics with just different people, and you may go from one relationship to another, but then realize that it actually it's one and the same relationship, it's just with different people. But if you don't grow, you stay in that loop of karma. And you are reenacting childhood wounds, you are reenacting some karmic patterns, you may be reenacting the challenges, the wounds of your in your family line and so on. So it goes quite deep. But uh, it's something that needs to be addressed and cleared and healed. Yeah? Karma is there. And in fact, when I speak about the three stages of dharmic love, 
in the first stage, we are dealing with karma. So we are dealing with all the wounds that were created. Either in our lives, there's a lot of things that go back to childhood. Yeah, it's like perhaps many of you even know about that. Yeah, it's very common right now to talk about attachment theory, adult attachment theory, to talk about different attachment styles, uh, to understand from standpoint of psychology. Yeah, let me know if you're familiar with those things, the anxious attachment style, the avoidant attachment style. So all those um, styles, the styles of how we relate to someone else, they are conditioned by how we related to our parents our, or our main caregivers in childhood. Yeah, and so whatever wounds were created there, we will seek healing those wounds inevitably. That's how we are designed. We want to heal. We want to come to a place of dharma. We want to come to a place of alignment with our supreme path. We don't want to stay in suffering. We want to feel healed. This is normal for human beings. But sometimes we don't have the understanding that the healing is taking place. And we may be just in certain situations and stuck in certain patterns, but not realize that actually we were brought together with this person for healing purposes. Actually, that's how all, yeah, maybe 99% of relationships start. They start not from love. You know, we think that this flush of hormones and this big desire and this texting each other late into the night and just constantly thinking of each other and being going crazy in love and with sexual desire for a certain person we think that this is love well <laughs> here i have to come and <laughs> tell you that it's not love that this is actually a thirst for healing and this is a very typical sign of a karmic relationship, meaning relationship that was brought for healing. Yeah, And you can go through, you know, running ahead of time, you can go through various, all those three stages with the same person. And sometimes people stay together their whole lives. And I've seen couples who have been going through all those stages and even sometimes, you know, go stage one, two, three, and then back to one. But anyway... We are still on the stage one. So this need for healing, it draws us to people. It's like we can recognize them. We will recognize them by how they smell even. Yeah, that's the main thing in biology, why we are attracted to people. Because of their smell. <laughs> as simple as that. Because you smell and you recognize something matching in that smell. You recognize something in their immune system. But then also on psychological level, you are drawn to certain people because they feel familiar. They somehow remind you of, of how you know love to be. So that's why lots of people who tell me that they experience unavailable partners, that again and again they fall in love with someone who is not fully there. Again and again they fall in love with a person who is married, who has other commitments, who just doesn't have a time and energy to spend time with this person. Yeah, or uh, unavailability. Sometimes it may be like, okay, the person is there with you, but emotionally you just don't feel connected. So this can be referred to as emotionally unavailable person. Yeah, for whatever reasons. And some people that again and again and again and again, they attract that into their lives. Again and again. And one unavailable person after another. In various, various shapes and forms. Yeah, maybe that he's not fully available, but he's still married or she. Yeah, it refers to both genders. Or uh, he is there, but he cannot fully commit. Yeah? So... Let me know if you've experienced something like this. And then it's again and again, recurring thing. Why? Why, why, why? Why do I have this pattern? Why this is happening to me again and again and again? And usually the reason why is because it really reminds you of something that you know deeply, something that you've experienced as love in childhood. Because when as children, we don't know we don't know what love is, how love is supposed to feel. 
we just know what we experience. And then if we experience that one parent was not there, for example, or was not fully there, or like they were there, but they were not really feeling you, they were not understanding your needs, they were not understanding you uh, as who you are. Yeah. And so then it feels familiar. Then you're like, okay, they tell you they love you. You well, you don't you don't feel like they really see you and they like you don't feel something, but you don't you don't know any better. You're like, okay, that's how love should feel. And then you go through life attracting unavailable people who are just not there emotionally. And then until a certain phase, you think that it's normal. Then you wake up and then you realize, no, it's not normal. I don't want it like this. I deserve better. I am worthy of incredible love. I am worthy of incredible romance. I am here for that. And then you start searching and then you start to discover those wounds, those patterns, and you heal and uh, you become free from that. So it is absolutely possible. Uh, because I saw some, some of you commented that you find yourself in those patterns. And it's very, very common. So it is possible to shift that. And it's happening in this first stage. In this first stage, uh, we feel we are drawn to someone and we need the relationship. Yeah, there will be a strong sense of need. I need them to be in a relationship. I need a partner. Why this is not happening to me? I need, I need, I need. Yeah, so it's like it feels like there is like a hole in the heart that just needs to be filled and it just doesn't get filled. So either you're just not attracting the person or you may be in a relationship, but it just feels like there's constantly something going wrong in that relationship. And it's the partner is not showing up. They are not mature enough. They're not spiritual enough. They're not this enough. And it's like this need. Yeah, you need something different. You need to feel love somehow in, in your way. So whenever there is this need, it's always a the sign that it's the first stage. Yeah, it's a stage of healing. It's a stage of resolving those karmas. It's a stage of resolving wounds from past. And uh, yeah, it is resolvable. But for that, we need to take responsibility. We need to take responsibility to, be, to, to get honest and to start looking at those things. What your parents didn't give you and who needs to give it to you? Is it really a role of another person? Because sometimes we get very, very righteous in relationships and then we start blaming partners and saying like you need to be showing up this way for me and you're not doing it and in fact who we need to really request request those needs from is ourselves yeah so it's like we can call it self uh, parenting yeah? becoming your parent uh, partner and par parent also it, it can be both ways yeah? you can say you develop your inner parent that you never had as a child and also you develop your inner partner the partner of your dreams that actually you are for yourself here the work of the inner masculine and inner feminine becomes very useful uh, you may have heard me speak about this or you may just uh, know it from somewhere else about the inner masculine inner feminine it's a it's a very powerful way to disidentify those two parts inside and develop a part inside that really knows how to hold you as precious, as sacred, as the most beautiful, dear thing ever. So that's, uh, that's your job, basically. And that's where healing really is is sitting yeah, so wherever you feel oh like there's no one who can meet me yeah it's like projecting on the outside you need to turn this in where you don't meet yourself turn into that turn towards yourself and that's where the healing starts then from this place, when you've taken responsibility, when you've decided that you're going to be your best partner first, you're going to really connect with that inner beloved and you're going to find a way to really let yourself be held in your own embrace. Oh my God. 
Yeah, you went, but it's possible, you know, I see this happening. It is a real thing that we can really learn to mature in such a way that we stop delegating responsibility for making us feel a certain way, for making us feel happy to anybody else external. Just just feel it for a moment. Like, what? how would your life be if you completely stopped expecting people around you to make you feel a certain way? Ooh, really, this is big, you know? And it's for all of us. Reminder again and again and again that there's nobody, it's nobody's job to make you feel seen. It is nobody's job to make you feel empowered. It is nobody jo- nobody's job to make you feel loved. Nobody's. But your own. Hmm. So this is a radical self-responsibility. This is where we can start speaking about being really an adult and being a leader. Because a leader is the one who takes responsibility and owns it all and understands that everything that's happening in your life Guess what? You created it. You created it. And it's not that, oh my God, I created it. How could I do something so horrible to myself? No, you created it because your soul has chosen to have this experience for whatever reason. Even if you are going through a very difficult time right now, some challenges come up. Somehow your soul has chosen to have this experience. And the moment you claim it, you claim your power. And this exact that moment, you can change it and you can heal. So then uh, we go to the second stage of the dharmic love. And in this stage, actually, we can start to relate. We can start to relate to another person. Until then, it's not even a relationship. I mean, it's a relationship, but it's not really a meeting. We are not meeting. It's like each is sitting in their own bubble. Give me love. You don't give me enough love. I need more love. Give me that. I am looking for that. I need to fill in this hole in my heart. I'm too busy. I'm too busy to to meet somebody. I'm too busy with myself. I need to be healing myself. That's what I'm doing here in the first stage. In the second stage, you've claimed your responsibility. Then you can meet another. You can meet another person and then this meeting happens because you are free and the other person is free and then you start to see each other. You start to see each other as separate individuals that have their own gifts, that have their own challenges, that have their own things. yeah. And you start to just see the worth of another person because you see your own worth. Until we see our own worth, we cannot acknowledge the worth of another. Whenever you think about, oh, this person, no, I don't know if he is worthy of me. I don't know if he's mature enough for me. I don't know if he's spiritual enough for me. I don't know if she's getting this. I don't know. Maybe she's not that. You deprive this person of their worth. I mean, for yourself. You cannot take it from them, but... For internally, you cannot admit the worth of another person. Only because you haven't yet admitted your own. So again, we go back to the first stage and here the healing is to happen. Yeah. All those wounds from childhood need to be addressed. Maybe not all, but as much as possible. Yeah. Then, uh, when there is self-worth, your self-sovereignty, then the meeting is happening and then... Um, I call it like an age type of relationship where two people stand tall and strong by themselves. They no longer need, there's no such thing, I need a relationship. Not from a place of like, I need because I need to be filled because I'm empty on the inside and when I'm in a relationship, finally I will feel full. And there's no such thing anymore. It's first stage. In the second stage, there's this age type relationship where I am strong, tall and strong by myself, I know how to hold myself, I know how to be my own best partner, I know how to be my own par- parent, yeah? I am I am full, I am complete. And then you are also standing tall and strong, so we're not collapsing towards each other, yeah? Like in the first stage, it will be like this collapse, it's not a meeting. 
meeting happens here and then between us there is a link this commitment yeah then through commitment finally love starts to grow so in the beginning remember this is not love it may feel like love you fall in love hormones are all over the place fireworks and lightnings full-on sexual desire super activated uh, hormonal system but it's not love yet yeah. love is something that grows love is something that grows between adults love is something that gets developed it's not something that's there from the start and so often i hear people say oh well love is not there well because you haven't chosen to love love is a choice really in an second stage relationship in a dharmic relationship you, you choose to love and it's a continuous cultivation you are continuously cultivating that love choosing every day to show up for love to show up in love to show up for each other to grow and then uh, the meeting happens and this meeting is beautiful and it is so precious to be met and meet on this level because you start to like you you invite your beloved into the temple of your heart and you are invited by the beloved into the temple of their heart through this commitment through this choice to keep showing up for love and keep showing up for each other <laughs> thank you for this explosion of hearts um, you you enter into the holy of holies into the most sacred place of another person and there you are held and there you are holding your beloved. And this is so intimate. This is such a precious human experience. When, yeah, when sometimes you, you might feel like strange or lots of intensity going on in your life and lots of chaos, then you can find yourself resting in the heart of the beloved who is there choosing to show up for you, choosing to commit for you. Yeah, this is only possible in the meeting, in the meeting of two healed people in the second, in the second stage of the Dharmic love. And then um, we move to the third stage of Dharmic love. From here it is possible. And in the third stage, we can speak about a union we can speak about something that is you no longer are in the first stage where you're expecting the partner to show up a certain way for you to feel good no it's no longer there you're also you are in the commitment yeah and at the same time you also recognize something profound inside of you you recognize that you are love. That love is not something that is just like it's an expression of you, that it's that it's being expressed through you, but you recognize that you are love. Yeah. You are love. That you recognize that you are not separate from that love that you are you are pouring out through through the commitment, through the meeting. With the beloved it's you you even recognize that it's not even like separate from you it's like it's not something that is just coming through you or coming from you it's like it's it's you it's you and your beloved is you and the space around you is you and all the people around are you and love is just breathing all existence and every moment is being breathed by love and you recognize yourself in that breath continually. And this might be an experience of an expanded state of consciousness. Yeah, it might happen in the meditation, it might happen in the profound lovemaking, it might happen uh, induced by certain conditions. Or it may happen just completely spontaneously. You may just... Ah, remember that. Remember that you are that sky from where all stars explode 
into the universe. You may remember yourself as that endless ocean of existence. And everything that fluctuates is just waves on your surface. But you are the ever everlasting unending ocean and you are love so when this recognition takes place yeah and sometimes it will fade away and yeah, other times it will be stronger but once you've tasted that your life is forever changed your life will never go back to normal you will still experience need for healing and stage one patterns you will still experience stage two and the beauty of commitment but your life will forever be changed and even if you will try to forget it you will go like okay can i just unsee it because how to live from that place how to function from this place okay i recognize myself as the sky from where everything explodes like but how to live how to do how to do practically about it <laughs> And you will go like, okay, it doesn't really serve me practically. So can I just like unsee it, like forget about it and just have normal life? <laughs> and uh, uh, no, <laughs> uh, no, no, you cannot. You cannot. Once you've been kissed by love, you are infected forever and magnificently so. May we all be infected by that, by that. So once we are in the third uh, stage of dharmic love, of remembering our true origin, then we are completely free. And then sometimes people will say, well, if I, if I am everything, if I am that, if I am love, why would I even need a relationship? And then that's true, yeah, you don't need a relationship. <laughs> you don't need anything really, but you may desire a union. And that's where a relationship gets transformed into a union. If there are two, two individuals walking this path together, side by side, then relationship gets converted into a sacred union where there is no separation, where it's like you are one organism. It's like, I thought something you created. You, cre you thought something I created. Yeah, it's like there is a, a continuous flow in that union. It's a one organism in that meeting of two people. So this is what I wanted to, to speak today about about those three ways of how love evolves and all those places are love ultimately because love is everything and we can learn to see love in everything and everywhere and it's a beautiful way of walking in devotion when we walk in devotion we train ourselves continually to open to love, to remember ourselves as love, to remember life as love, to surrender to love. And in that we become so big, we become so big, we take up so much space, we become, we unlock our creativity, we unlock this spontaneous expression of love and what greater expression there is. And of course, uh, it's also really linked to our personal capacity to hold that intensity of love. Yeah, and here I could replace the word love with the word God. Yeah, for me, these are synonyms. Or we can replace it with the word universe. It's the same thing. Yeah. So to hold the magnificence of the universe that you are, you also need to build a resilience in the body, in the physical and energetic and emotional body to be able to, to not be swayed by it. Because love is pouring at us at all times. It's 
pouring through us. And as we go deep into practices, into practices the way that I am facilitating, the practice of embodiment, the practices of going deep into the body, of expanding energetic body, of training emotional intelligence, as we are doing it, we become not so easily swayed by this voltage, this high, high, high voltage of the power of the universe. And we start to become equipped to hold more power and more love. And through that, yeah, we discover ourselves as love and we see this world with love. And love can be expressed in many different ways. Yeah, love is expressed just through the way you walk through your day. Love is expressed through your work. Love is expressed through how you love, how you talk to people, how you look at people, how you take space in your life, how you choose that you matter. This is all coming from love. Hmm. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. I will uh, speak to you about an opportunity to work together if you want to go deeper into these stages and, and exploring yourself on all these stages. So I will speak now about the upcoming training that I have that's happening in just a week. So if you want to stay for this, uh, welcome. If you feel complete, this is totally fine. You, you're welcome to leave now. Uh, thank you so much for being here, for tuning in, for being part of this conversation. And the, uh, the training that is coming, I feel <laughs> such incredible uh, joy about this training. Uh, always just before the training, the essence of the training starts to unpack inside of me. That's how my creativity unfolds. It's like... I really feel the field of the group that is coming together and then it becomes very clear what are we working so it's never the same training i've never in my whole life run the same training some of them were similar and, and some i still had like a curriculum and still it was always completely different but now even more so i i love to teach in this way where i don't have an agenda i come as an with so much openness but still as we come closer to the training then i start to get impressions and downloads of what is needed for this group for our field that is present right now and it's in in conjunction with like okay the specific people that are coming to to the training right now but also what's happening in the world what do we need collectively because then the, we do the work in the training and it's full on super fiery it's seven days of like really going from morning to night in a very condensed powerful environment this cauldron of transformation that is the temple where we uh, meet every single day for all day long it's this accelerated uh, transformation that happens there it's amazing it's like we get so cleansed and purified by the fire that is always there in the temple in my work so and now i'm feeling what is landing and it's amazing it's amazing so we're gonna go through this journey of love yeah um, the third we will be exploring the three stages as i've just walked you through but it, with each of that stages, we will go very deep into really seeing where are our patterns, where we have been stuck, where we have stuff to work with, to unlock, how to heal some old stuff that we may not even know that we are carrying, because lots of those things are just in our subconscious and are passed down to us through generations. So there will be like, in the beginning, we'll be doing lots of healing and lots of just cleansing and purifying and burning away anything that's not true and that's a powerful powerful work and it's it's a daily thing you know i am doing this daily and uh, start to look inside to see where i'm stuck to see where there is fear to become bigger to become who i came here to be it's this continuous work 
So, uh, and there specifically we'll be looking at like where we are stuck in relationships. Yeah, what is not allowing us to go to the next level of relationship, be it in your current relationship or be it just in your life, in your relational romantic life. Yeah, maybe there is nothing happening for many years and you will also see why, why not. So then uh, we will go into the uh, healed way to love. Yeah, healed way to love. A specific work we can do in a relationship to go very deep, to really get stabilized in the commitment and to see this fire of commitment as a spiritual practice itself. It's amazing. Like I am so on fire for this. <laughs> so yeah, here is like how to relate as really empowered adults, how to meet in a really empowered way, how to communicate in a way that you are heard and how to really learn to hear and how to communicate with your body even without words and how to cultivate a profound platform for love to really unlock and to be in that soft embrace in a relationship because it is a profound uh, space of of joy of of healing of nourishment relationship and we need to learn how to relate we we were not given that in as we were growing up and we usually have had really poor examples of what it means to relate so there will be a chunk on that and then we will go wild we will go into love as eros eros expressing itself as love our erotic energy our sexual energy and there may be so much shame stored there there may be so many blocks that we may not even realize how much it is suffocating us in our lives when erotic energy is the most natural way of being is an energy of life so we will be blossoming into life and then from there things will go even wilder because it will be about remembering yourself as love remembering yourself as god remembering yourself as the universe supreme intelligence of life so that's in a nutshell the journey that we are going on and the fire of love training starts in a week from now it's taking place in spain um, we are staying in a gorgeous place full of fruit trees and it's just it's delicious i love being there so we still have open spots and you're welcome to join us. So the, all the information you will find when you go to the link in my bio and uh, see Fire of Love training the events and the Fire of Love. So if you're feeling cold, you're really welcome. Uh, we are open for everyone, for men and women, but you will need to send in your application and we need to see if that's a, that's a correct time for us to meet. So... Um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to join. Hello, Joyce. <laughs> um, you, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. Um, and uh, if not, then uh, you, you're also welcome to send me a message afterwards. So either myself or my team will respond to you. And uh, in, in any case, thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to being connected to you. Ciao, ciao.